on the National Geographic Channel. As we mentioned just a moment ago in tonight's Diary of the Planet, the Bush administration is reported to be considering a compromise on a bill that would open up Alaska's Arctic National Wildlife Refuge to drilling for oil. Our in-depth look at this issue continues now. Kristen Whiting explores what's at stake in Anwar, a delicate balance between people, wildlife, and resources. This is one of the largest pieces of preserved federal land in North America. Nineteen million acres of Arctic tundra, mountains, and rivers. Home to a complete and intact ecosystem. The refuge was established in the 1960s and expanded under the Carter administration. With this bill, we are acknowledging that Alaska's wilderness areas are truly this country's crown jewel. But that same bill also allows for the possibility of oil exploration. No one is certain how much oil lies under the refuge. It could be anywhere from 4 to 11 billion barrels. Everyone acknowledges that's nowhere near enough to satisfy the U.S.'s current demand for oil. But every little bit helps. Sixty miles west of the refuge is Prudhoe Bay, an old-style operation that's out of date and running out of oil. But people who favor drilling say a lot's been learned in the 26 years since Prudhoe Bay was built lessons that could be useful in ANWR. One of the interesting things that's happened in the Arctic in the last 30 years, the Alaskan Arctic, is the evolution of the technology that's used to drill for oil and oil up there. And it's improved method of finding oil, producing oil, and protecting the environment all at the same time. While infrastructure would still be built, New technology means fewer platforms. Oil companies trying to decrease their impact would build many of the roads from ice, limiting damage to the tundra. In reality, though, the impacts are not really identified yet. I and mean, there's an impact, there's an aesthetic impact. No populations are decreasing, no populations are in danger. All the species are doing just fine in the oil fields, so what is the impact? Environmentalists disagree. They feel the problems would be more than cosmetic. Grizzly bears, muskox, and more than 130 species of migrating birds are just some of the animals whose habitat would be affected. But the star of the debate is the caribou. Herds of caribou migrate each year across the coastal plain and into Canada. The plain is the caribou's birthing ground, and the herds are especially important to Native Alaskans. My people are called the caribou people. We depend solely on the porcupine caribou, and we use it for our clothing, for our food, and there are tools that are made from the caribou bones. The Guchin people are, are very concerned about the pressures from the oil and gas companies to develop that area in the calving grounds of the porcupine caribou herd. Most of the Guchin people of Arctic Village see drilling as a dark cloud, but farther north, Native Alaskans living in Kuktavik see a silver lining. Charlie Brower is a member of the Inupiat. He says that his people are willing to take the risk to bring jobs to the area. What we don't know is how much of a, of a, of a change there will be in a migration route of the caribou. It could be as little as five feet, it could be as much as five miles, but the caribou are still going to come. 
And the refuge is also home to the country's highest concentration of polar bear denning sites. And seismic testing used for oil exploration could force bears from their dens prematurely. The coastal plain is the biological heart of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Deborah Williams is the director of the Alaska Conservation Foundation. By definition, oil and gas platforms, drills, rigs, flaring, production facilities, pipelines and roads are inconsistent with wilderness. But to a lot of people here with few other ways to make a living, the decision seems easy. The majority of the people here are for the opening of animal. The ecology you're talking about includes the people who live here. We are not separate from the land. What about us? People, land, and animals, and an effort to find a balance in a wilderness rich in resources.